everyone, and welcome back to this R programming journey. Today we're going to be doing a simulation of sampling and study the distribution associated to the sampling mean. And we're going to be analyzing one of three distributions, one from a normal, one from the exponential distribution, and one from a uniform distribution as an exercise at the end. So the central limit theorem, which is often probably one of the most infamous theorems in uh, theoretical statistics, says that regardless of the distribution you sample from, uh, the mean of the distribution of the sample means will be the same as the mean of the original. The variance of the sampling distribution of sampling means will be equal to the variance of the original population divided by the sample size that you are drawing from these populations. And the distribution of the sample means will converge to a normal distribution regardless of the distribution of the original. Obviously, if the original distribution is far from normal, the distribution of the sampling means will converge obviously slower to a normal distribution than that of which comes from, say, a normal distribution originally. So let's use R to sort of simulate these processes to see if that's actually what happens um, in practice. So the first thing I want to define is going to be our sample size. So let's assume that we're going to be um, collecting a bunch of samples of size 25, and obviously we can change this. And let's define the number of samples that we're going to collect. Let's start off with 100. We can always increase this a little bit later. So let's assume that we're going to be drawing from a normal normally distributed population with a mean of 128 and a standard, devi um, standard deviation of, let's say, uh, 3.4. For reproducibility purposes, let's just set a seed of, let's say, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, um, so that, you know, just in case you want to see the same observations as me, or you want to work with your own random data, that's perfectly fine as well. So the first thing that I want to sort of analyze is the distribution of all of the values from all of the samples that I collect. I'm going to be saving all of these values in a vector called S total. And S total is going to be defined to be a blank vector because I haven't collected anyone yet. And I'm going to be saving the mean of each of the samples that I collect in another vector, and I'm gonna call this vector S means. Obviously my vector is going to be empty because I haven't collected any samples yet. So now what I want to do is simulate the sampling process. So for this, I'm going to do a for loop since I know exactly how many samples I want to collect. So for K in the index from one to the number of samples that I have, so this is gonna be a for loop, k is just a dummy variable that's going to index from 1 to ns. Um, so the sample, let's start off with a normal sample. So we can do that via the r norm function. We're going to sample a size of n from this. The mean is going to be equal to our mu defined above, and our standard deviation is going to be equal to sigma, which is defined above as well. And here I'm going to say, okay, s total is going to be equal to, so we're going to glue our values to that s total vector each time we get them. So that's going to be s total, we're going to append those, those new values on there. So s total, append the values of our sample, and that's going to create all of our population values. And then we're going to have s means defined in a similar way. So append s means. So append s means, and we're going to append the mean of that sample s, right? So our s total is going to get bigger and bigger, in particular by size n each time. So in the end, we should have 25 times 100 elements in s total, and in the end, s mean should have 100 uh, sample means collected at the end. All right, so let's just give uh, those things a run. So set seed, set total, S means, and then let's run that for loop, and this is going to give us all of our values. So notice that S means has our 100 means, and S total has our 2,500, which is just 25 times 100 sample values that it collected over the course of that sample process. Now let's analyze those particular results. Let's first analyze all of the values in S total. 
um, we can just do a histogram there and we can use its default distribution there. So obviously it looks like we're sampling from a normal distribution if we just look at a histogram. Uh, we can probably increase the number of bins for this. For example, we can say breaks is equal to 100 and that would make it look, you know, a little bit more like a normal distribution. Now, obviously, if you see this distribution in your empirical distribution of your data, that does not imply that the distribution we're sampling from is normal, but we know based on our simulation, we are actually sampling from a normal via this command, right? But as, as we see, the empirical distribution does appear similar to our theoretical distribution which is intended. Now, what is not obvious is the distribution of the sampling means, right? So if we do a histogram for the means, and let's let it do default, because we only have 100 values, so doing 100 breaks probably will be a little bit overkill. So if we sample that, notice that we do have sort of a semi-symmetric distribution, right? So for example, if we do a couple more breaks, like breaks is equal to 20, maybe is appropriate. It sort of looks like a normal distribution, but it's definitely not obvious um, from the data values that we have here. So in order to make this a little bit more obvious, what I want to do is I want to increase the number of samples that we have from 100 to let's go to 10,000. I'm going to use the same exact definitions as we did before. I'm going to rerun that for loop. Um, every time you see this little stop sign in the top corner, that just means it's running an R. Sometimes it takes a small time, sometimes a long time, but notice that the stop sign is gone and it's definitely completed. So if we run our histogram for our sample things, notice that it's getting closer and closer to the distribution that it's coming from, which is anticipated. And if we look at the histogram for our means, notice that it is getting closer to a normal distribution too. All right. So if we increase the number of bins, notice that that gives us our histogram for means, and that gives us our histogram of our sampling data. Now, question, if you look at this distribution here and this distribution here, they appear to be similar in terms of the means. It looks like it's about 128, which is the mean that we define for our sampling distribution here. But if you analyze a little bit more closely, Notice that this distribution goes down to about 120, and this other value goes down to about 126. So the standard deviations appear to be different. And the central limit theorem and properties of uh, random variable theory um, do allow us to figure out exactly what those are. So what I want to do now is I want to create a little summary table of the empirical mean and theoretical mean for the histogram of the sampling distribution of sample means and also analyze the variance as well to sort of see if those appear to be similar. So what I want to do is I want to create, for example, the column names. So the column names are going to be equal to, let's do empirical first, so empirical, and let's do theoretical in the second column, and then the row names are going to be equal to so row names is going to be equal to, let's do the means first, and let's do the standard deviation second. All right? And you can obviously change those names as you see uh, appropriate. So the value of those means is going to be equal to what? So the empirical mean is going to be equal to the mean of the sample means. And the theoretical mean should be equal to the mean of the original distribution, which should be equal to mu in our case. So we can sort of compare those to see if they are close. And then the value of our standard deviation is going to be equal to, so we can do standard deviation of the sample means, and the standard deviation of the theoretical distribution is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the original distribution, which is sigma, divided by the square root of the sample size that we are collecting. So that gives us that. Now what we can do is we can start to construct our table. So let's call it a summary table, so S table. And we're going to row bind the, C, the value of the means and the value of our standard deviations. And let's give those columns and rows appropriate names as well. So the column names of S table 
will be equal to C names, the vector we define above, and the row names of S table are going to be defined to be equal to the R names as defined in the vector above. And then once we have all that defined, now we can reproduce our table, and that gives us this. So notice the mean of the empirical distribution is 128.00996, and the theoretical should be 128. So we definitely see that those are equal to each other. And one could increase the sample size um, and the number of samples we do, and those things should get in closer and closer to each other. And notice the standard deviations do appear to be getting closer and closer to each other, although there is more of a difference here than that in, for example, the mean, but it's 0.67 and 0.68 here. Obviously, if we increase the sample size up to 50 and then rerun all of those things, obviously we have to wait for our little stop sign again. What do we anticipate things to look like? Well, obviously the distribution of our empirical distribution should be looking closer like the normal distribution. So that's our new distribution. We probably can increase the number of bins since we have definitely quite a few number of points here. And S means I'm going to keep, actually I'm going to increase it up to say 500. And obviously it is getting closer and closer to a normal, but technically speaking, it's still empirical. So it might not look exactly like it. Again, I'm going to construct my little summary table and do notice that now we're again at 0 0.47, 0 0.48, and 1.8. Now we're at like three decimal point accuracy, which is anticipated. So we definitely do see, now notice that this is not the central limit theorem, right? Because we already know if we sample from a normally distributed population, the sample mean will be exactly normally distributed. That's not surprising. But the next exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to change this distribution from a normal to an exponential and see if it does give us the same results or not. Now that we've dis demonstrated that the sampling distribution of sampling means from a normal distribution definitely appears to be normal, let's see what the distribution of sampling means looks like when the distribution is not normal. For example, what if we sample from an exponential distribution instead? So obviously for an exponential distribution, we do not need mu or sigma. So the parameter that we're typically given is the rate parameter lambda. And let's assume that the rate parameter lambda for our exponential distribution is 7.12. Therefore, the mean is going to be the reciprocal of lambda, so 1 divided by 7.12 will be the expected value of that random variable, and the variance of that random variable will be 1 over lambda squared, and the standard deviation will just be 1 over lambda. So the standard deviation and the mean will be equal to each other for the exponential distribution case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the sample size of 25. Again, we can obviously increase that. The number of samples 100, our lambda to be 7.12. Let's define our seed for reducibility, create our blank vectors S total and S means. And then for here, we're just going to change this function from an R norm to an R EXP. We're going to be sampling uh, sizes of M and our rate parameter is going to be equal to lambda. Our S total and our S means vector are not going to change. So we're just going to give this for loop a run, which is quite short because we're only doing this 100 times. And then let's do our histogram. Uh, let's do 100 and let's do 50 for our initial breaks. So our sampling distribution from an exponential distribution should be looking like an exponential distribution, and indeed it does look like our exponential distribution. But what will the distribution of sample means looks like? So if we give this a run, ah, what is that? Well, that's definitely not an exponential distribution. If anything, it looks like a broken normal distribution, maybe even a chi-square distribution if you're familiar with that is, but it's definitely not exponential. So that's actually quite interesting. So let's see what the mean and standard deviations are doing, right? Because we know what those should be regardless of what the central limit theorem says. So the mean is going to be equal to one over lambda. So one over lambda for the mean. And the one over lambda is gonna be our standard deviation. So one over lambda there, and that's gonna be divided by the square root of n. That's the theoretical standard deviation for that. So let's give that a run. Let's create our table and then display. So notice here that our mean and our standard deviation are converging to what it appears to be what they should be getting close to. 
and obviously these formulas, 1 over lambda and 1 over lambda divided by the square root of n, those are just coming from uh, the properties of random variables, in particular expected value and variance of you know linear combinations of variables. But the distribution of the sampling means is quite interesting. So obviously it doesn't look like anything we know. So what do we do? Well, obviously we're going to be increasing our sample size and increasing the number of samples that we do. Let's keep the lambda value the same, the set seed the same, and rerun that for loop. And actually that does it quite quickly. Again, the distribution should be getting closer and closer to our theoretical distribution, which it is. We can probably increase that up to 200 and it's gonna be more accurate. And for our breaks, if we do, let's go up to 100, now we get this type of distribution. And for the um, summary table, we get the same exact results as before, so that's not shocking at all. But notice that it's getting closer and closer to some, what it looks like to be normal distribution. So obviously we can increase the sample size up to 100 and increase this up to, for example, 10,000 times, rerun everything, wait for 5,000 hours for that to run, and once that is done running, then we can start analyzing our empirical distribution for our data. So once we give that a run, it definitely does create a very beautiful um, exponential distribution. And if we look at the histograms of our means, now this distribution is starting to look like something that is familiar. Now it's getting close to, take a guess, a normal distribution. So if we increase the number of breaks, obviously it's gonna have a little bit of more rigidness, but one can show that as you increase the sample size and the number of samples, this distribution will converge in probability to a normal distribution with the mean being the same as the mean of the original distribution and the standard deviation of that normal being the standard deviation of the original divided by the square root of the sample size. Obviously, we have shown that the central limit theorem actually does work. Now, keep note, if you want to use the normal distribution to approximate the mean of samples drawn from that distribution, that distribution will not be exactly normal, only approximately normal. If you look at this particular distribution, keep in mind the exponential distribution is a skewed right distribution, in particular a heavily skewed right distribution, and it's bounded below by zero, not negative infinity. But if you look at our normal distribution, even for smaller samples, it still looks about symmetric, but it is still skewed to the right. So please keep that in mind. This is just an approximation, not an exact, at least from the empirical perspective. So as an exercise, I just recommend trying this um, on a uniformly distributed data set, which obviously you just need to define your lower bound and upper bound, and just change this from REXP to RUNIF, and sort of see if you get the same exact result. Obviously, the uniform distribution doesn't have any curvature at all. It's just a flat distribution, but you should see that the distribution of the sampling means will still get close to a normal distribution, it just is a little bit more slower than that of a normal or an exponential distribution. So that is just a quick simulation, how to do simulations in R, in particularly focused on the central limit theorem. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.